Hi everybody, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today this video is going to be on my take uh, for the astrology um, as well as um, all the horoscopes for the individual signs and ascendants for May 2024. Now the big star of May, as far as I can see, at least one of the bigger stars, is going to be the planet Mars. And why is that? Well, Mars is going to be in Aries all month, and in fact, into the first week of June too. So this really suggests that there may be some really big activations and movement forward um, as a result of Mars during the month of May, activating not only the eclipse point at 19 degrees of Aries that we had uh, in April, but also the other planets as well as um, Chiron. So we have that Mercury retrograde that's going to be, uh, you know, going forward. But the fact that Mars will be conjuncting that, and then Mars will also conjunct the Venus points uh, that happened also in uh, the month of April. So I really see this almost as a uh, a prolonging of some of the things, some of the events that happened in April may get a chance now for takeoff. I mean, I'm getting this feeling of a rocket taking off here. And so, you know, I'm making this video actually the day before the eclipse, the, the total new moon eclipse at 19 Aries. So I've, I've not seen, obviously, when I make this video, what happened uh, that day, which will be tomorrow. So um, I just really see this as a big activation month. So for those folks that maybe had some things happen, but for some reason, they were the actual action of moving forward with something was kind of held back. It wasn't clear. This could be the month with Mars activating everything that happened in Aries in April. Uh, it could be the month when things really zoom forward for sure. And I'll cover those dates uh, that I just spoke about with regards to Mars conjuncting different things that happened in April. Um, but the other thing is, is that Jupiter also is a little bit of a star because Jupiter will ingress or go into the sign of Gemini. All right, let's start off with some of the actual transits and aspects. All right, so we have right on the 4th of May, we have Mars, right? Mars in Aries sextiling Pluto. And so this just brings drive for change. Um, it also helps you, uh, Mars focuses you together with this intense energy of Pluto on to examine your objectives carefully. So right off at the beginning of the month here on the 4th of May, we get that opportunity to do that, right? With that set up. Now the next day on the 5th of May, we have Mercury now going direct, conjuncting 19 degrees of Aries, which of course was the eclipse point. So this is probably a significant day for many people that really uh, saw some change, new starts, but something was holding them back. Either they were holding back or some circumstance was holding them back. Probably something to do with a communication of some sort. Um, and for others, this could be some sort of writing project. Um, this now has the opportunity to move forward. Even though technically Mercury is not out of shadow, I'm coming up to that soon, it still conjuncts that point. So I And it is direct. So I would say, uh, earmark that 5th of May if you've been waiting for some communication, maybe an email to give you this new start, maybe that phone call, um, maybe just some circumstance that had to shift, that didn't shift in April. This brings in positive messages for sure for the new start. And I see this as a visual of, you know, runners at the starting line and then that gun going off to say start, right? and then everyone running. It's that kind of image I'm getting here. Off to a running start, right? Now, the first lunation we have is going to be a new moon in Taurus, and that's going to be at 18 Taurus and two minutes. It'll be on the 7th of May at 8.22 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And it does have a wide, it's at 18 degrees, it has a wide conjunction uh, with Uranus. Um, 
and Jupiter to some extent, but it's still a number of degrees away from that. Uh, but, you know, both those planets, uh, Jupiter as well as Uranus, are also in Taurus. And they're accompanied by Venus uh, at 10 degrees of Taurus. So Venus does not conjunct this moon, but it's in the sign, and it's Venus is in its home sign, right, of Taurus. So it's a very positive uh, new moon here, and I would say especially for Taurians, um, this, this could be also another new start for them uh, with regards to whatever it is that they need to start new. So we're really looking at the degree point here of around 18 of Taurus. I sometimes take a degree or so on either side of the 18 degrees to have anything significant happen. But if you do have your birthday around this time, the 7th of May, um, that whole effect is going to be for your whole birthday year in terms of newness, right? But generally speaking, this is the Taurian new moon. So happy new moon birthday to all my Taurian uh, clients as well as viewers. We have uh, Mercury, which is direct, will be conjunct Chiron at 21 of Aries. And then the Sun and the Moon, because it's a new moon, we know the Sun and the Moon are together, will be sextiling Saturn. So this is, to me, a very lovely setup for opportunities to uh, put either our spirituality in place, opportunities to change structure of some sort. And for some people it may actually be, because Taurus can refer to certainly you know, the master builder refers to, you know, building structures, right? Um, and so with that influence of Taurus here and Saturn favorably by sextile, some people may literally be building their homes or metaphorically uh, building a new home situation, right? And so I see this as a really positive new moon, generally speaking. With Mercury conjunct Chiron, there may be some news with regards to uh, our health, uh, positive news with regards to our health that helps us make some kind of new start. Maybe we'll finally get some actual real research uh, regarding maybe safety of the vaccines or just general um, understanding of long-term effects of uh, that whole COVID uh, situation that we've had. So when we move now to the 12th, 13th of May, we have the sun. Uh, in Taurus will be conjuncting that degree point that both Jupiter and Uranus conjuncted, right? So that's around 21, 22 degrees of Taurus in April, on the 20th of April. So the sun coming up in over these degree points uh, is going to also, I would say, illuminate something for you with regards to freedom, change, um, that type of thing. Uh, and again, with Jupiter, of course, we always talk about, you know, foreign people, foreign things. It's the law as well. But, you know, when the sun brings that big illumination to that, there's going to be some better understanding of what was really going on or what really happened, right? And the sun also can represent a male figure. And so if we take this out to the collective, there may be some really big spotlight put on a male figure that we can take back to around the 20th or 21st of April of some big event that happened, right? Um, but we could also say that for us individually, if you've got this set up, so we're looking at 21, 22 degrees um, of Taurus, just take care with regards to, you know, putting yourself in situations where you could potentially have an accident because this can make you accident prone as well. So just take care with what you're driving, um, anything that you're doing around your home or work, don't take risks, that type of thing. Um, but certainly this day is going to have, if you've got this degree point aspected for you, really wanting to seek change uh, and freedom, right? And Jupiter on top of that really saying, um, and expanding that feeling, and then the sun on top, illuminating it. <laughs> and uh, that same day, on the 13th of May, we are also going to have Mercury coming out of shadow. It's the 13th, 14th of May, depending where you are. And so, yippee, we now have that whole Mercury um, effect 
of the shadow and the retrograde itself completely done and dusted, which is great. So this may also be, for some individuals, a day or days, 13th, 14th of May, where you get that final message or that final communications that say you're approved or um, the green light goes on and you get this communication saying, hey, we want to start now. Let's go ahead with this. Um, it can also be for others writing projects, you know, Mercury can represent that as well. And also Mercury represents sales and commerce as well. So all these areas may successfully start moving forward here. When we look at the uh, 17th and 18th, we have Venus now is going to be conjunct Jupiter Uranus uh, in Taurus at 21, 22 degrees of Taurus. And so here's another activation of what? Um, an initial event that happened on the 20th of April. Now, I would say that Venus here is going to bring a spotlight potentially to finances. I'm getting that more. Now, in the U.S., it might be that the Fed, there's some rumblings with the Fed. Uh, my understanding is that's probably more likely in June. But there may be something that comes up at this time uh, that's a surprise with regards to monies, now I'm talking about a collective level. But certainly if you've got this uh, aspecting, so 21, 22 degrees of Taurus, with Venus on top of that and Jupiter and Uranus aspected, you could get some unexpected money coming your way. I mean, Venus also can represent love. So again, individually, some folks may unexpectedly fall in love that day or days, 17th, 18th, right? When we go the next day, we're looking at the 19th of May. This may be a significant time in terms of real action, and that is because Mars will conjunct the North Nodes at about 14 degrees of Aries. And certainly, um, you know, our collective destiny could be activated here. Now, this can also bring up things like aggression. Um, I mean, this is Aries we're talking about here, and Mars, of course, rules Aries, so very comfortable here and has power. So there could be some powerful thing that happens here with regards to our collective destiny path and new ways of moving forward, right? The next lunation that we have is going to be on the 23rd of May. And it's a full moon in Sagittarius. So it's a full moon at two Sagittarius, 55 minutes. So it's almost at three degrees. It does sextile Pluto um, within a degree or so. Uh, and that's really positive. It's at 6.54 a.m. and that's Pacific Daylight Time. So this is just a lovely setup on its own, right? That full moon sextiling Pluto uh, in Aquarius. I really feel that there may be a real sense of hope and transformation or more like the transformation that's happening is very hopeful and very future oriented. And again, I think there's this tie in because it's Sagittarius and Sagittarius rules foreign people, foreign things, but also the law. It's almost like I'm getting this feeling of powerful energies coming in here to provide almost like shoring up things to some extent uh, in a positive way. So we will have the moon sextile Pluto, but then of course, uh, because it's a full moon, we'll have the sun trine Pluto. Now going together with this positive stuff that's happening uh, at this full moon in Sagittarius, we also have something very interesting going on. We have Neptune at the anoretic degree of 29 Pisces, uh, but we also have Jupiter as well as Venus at 29 degrees of Taurus. And so to me, this is like um, a huge culmination of energies. The anoretic degree is a critical degree in astrology. And as you know, the next thing that happens after 29 is you go into um, the first degree of the next sign. And so this is a real push of energies. I see this, the money markets, something big is going to be happening here with regards to our money markets for sure. Now, 
that moon that's in Sagittarius is in a fire sign, right? Sagittarius is a fire sign. And again, going back to April and many things that were happening in Aries, it trines, right? It trines anything in Aries. And so that moon goes on to trine everything that's in Aries as well, because, you know, that moon starts at two degrees. And so here's another activation of, and this I would say is very, very positive too. I mean, Jupiter as a sign is, is very forward thinking, future oriented, the big picture. Um, so I really like this setup of this concentration of energy that is positively aspected, right? So let's just go over that again. Venus and Jupiter at 29 degrees of Taurus will be sextiling Neptune at 29 degrees of Taurus. Now, for sure, Jupiter can expand and grow anything to do with Venus. Um, and Venus, like I said, is money markets potentially could grow here very positively. Um, we could also have individually people falling in love or having the opportunity to fall in love. But it also can rule our values too. So for others that have this aspect, 29 degrees, you, your value may, you may attract in great value for yourself. Now the other thing about Neptune is it can rule, you know, the waters. Uh, it also can rule, you know, the ethers and vapors, that sort of thing. Uh, drugs, alcohol as well. So something like this uh, could also, you know, be brought up, especially if we look at um, you know, the day after this full moon, on the 24th, we will have that moon uh, at 18 degrees of Sagittarius, square Saturn at 18 degrees of Pisces. So, to me, this says that there may be some, on an individual level especially, some difficulties with uh, things like water. Um, literally, water comes to a standstill for some reason. Um, it also can bring an individual level, a foreign connection, uh, people dealing with aspects of um, anything to do with um, that Pisces sort of realm of, you know, drugs, alcohol, that type of thing. Um, but water could come into the picture here again too, and not in such a positive way. It's like maybe we're going to go back to something big happening in the Red Sea area again, because it's a Sagittarius moon and that's foreign people, foreign things, right? Yeah. So that's on the 24th, we've got that square of the moon moving forward in Sagittarius, squaring Saturn. On the 26th, now this is a date to mark on your calendar, we have Mars, still in Aries, conjunct that degree point uh, of 19 degrees of Aries, where we had that total new moon eclipse in April. So this also will be, again, this activation of some sort, the potential to move forward with all those new things that you want to do, the potential to move forward with maybe a new version of yourself, where you take the reins and say, I'm going on this path now. I guess the only caution would be you know, respect others around you and, you know, you can be assertive about what you want, but take care, of course, of the people's um, opinions and feelings as well, right? Now, that same day on the 26th, we're going to have Jupiter now at zero degrees of Gemini. I think that's awesome, too. Venus will trine Pluto at two degrees, followed by Jupiter trining Pluto at one degree, right? Because we've got Pluto going retrograde. So I would say that um, that 26th is certainly a day to mark on your calendar for some, some shifts, some like real shifts. Okay, it's finally happened. All the preparation that I've done, um, all the things that I've set in place here are now going to move forward. Jupiter in Gemini, I did do a video on this. I'll put the link here below. But Jupiter in Gemini can certainly bring um, a big focus on expanding just communications on its own. Writing can expand. Um, Jupiter also can rule the law. So I see it going into Gemini 
where the law working together with other people, that's also Gemini working with others, right? Um, to publish or make known different things to do with the law. So we may have some big things that happen around the law at this time on a collective level too, where we hear a lot more about it and a lot more movement forward with it, right? And then the Venus trining Pluto, followed by Jupiter trining Pluto, is also awesome. Good news about money. Um, good news about foreign things. And Jupiter, again, can be the law, too. And if this is something that aspects your chart, some folks may actually be getting the opportunity to publish some kind of writing project. In fact, there may be something, you know, in the press about some significant tome of some sort that is published that's significant for us to read. That may come up here too, by the way. All right, the 29th and 30th of April, we have that Mercury uh, will be conjunct at Jupiter and Uranus at 21, 22 degrees. We already know what that means. That goes back to April too. So there may be some significant um, communication of some sort um, that comes through 29th, 30th of April. That's going to be very important for some kind of shakeup. Now the shakeup could be happening again in our money systems, right? Because we're talking about this happening here in Taurus, right? Mercury conjunct Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus. So this could be news about that. If you've got this in your personal chart, this, this could just be good news that you've been waiting for that changes everything for you in a positive way. So we end on the 31st with Jupiter uh, trining Pluto at one degree. And I see this really as a time period of wrapping up this month of May, where for some, you're going to have professional success, right? Um, there may be some kind of um, communications uh, to do with sales and commerce. Um, and also taking calculated risks. That trine um, that involves Gemini and Aquarius also can be um, some big transformation with regards to anything to do with, say, our social media. Now, it's a trine, so it's positive, so there may be some new introduction of something that helps transform the way we communicate um, on social media. Yeah, let me just see about that. Yeah, I mean, Jupiter on its own is um, anything to do with the law, publishing, um, higher education, travel as well. And then the trine is positive energy, generally speaking. And of course, Pluto talks about transformation. It also speaks to truth as well, powerful people. So there may be some, maybe some very powerful speeches at this time too, towards the end of May, uh, that are very transformational. And at an individual level, if for sure, if you've got these um, degree points, you know, we're talking about one degree or so of Gemini and one degree of Aquarius, and you have to make some kind of presentation or appeal to a number of people or a group, this could be great success for you towards the end of May. I just wanted to mention um, that my lovely, loyal, kind, um, wonderful this dog Sasha um, is no longer with us and I just wanted to thank the people um, this was a couple years ago kindly sent money for her uh, operation which actually was successful a couple years ago for her many tumors um, but unfortunately those tumors came back a year ago and so I've had this um, opportunity for a year to be with her even though these now could not be operated on. And so they really were just gonna to continue to grow. And um, it was time to say goodbye to Sasha, but I just wanted to thank everybody. Um, and you'll see a picture here of her, one of the last pictures I took of her. And I hope she's having lots of fun with the other two dogs that are up somewhere, um, barking around and running around having fun. All right. So. I'm also going to cover next here, um, sort of a peek ahead for June 
and then I'll go into your individual signs and or ascendants you pick. So when we have this little June peak at the astrology, you can look forward to in June a new moon in Gemini. And of course, remember that um, we are also going to have Jupiter now in Gemini, right? Uh, there'll be a full moon in Capricorn at one degree. Uh, Mercury and Venus will actually be together at one degree of Cancer. So Cancer, that could be some nice stuff for you coming up. Um, yeah, all right, let's, let's stop there and let's go into the different sun signs and or ascendants. So Scorpio, that new moon in Taurus is in your opposite sign, so it highlights your seventh house. Seventh house tends to be our partners, business partnerships, marriage partnerships, and clients. So I suspect there's, and don't forget, that seventh house is going to be packed for you with other planets too, not just the new moon. And so I think something's going to be happening around your partnerships and or clients or all three of these. Um, and it, it probably is going to be a positive new start for your partner or your business partner, or you get an opportunity to work with other business partners or put together a business partnership at this time. But there may be some lucky things that happen to your partner whether it's a marriage partner, a business partner, or a lucky client or clients that come in maybe with money to support you. Because Venus and Jupiter, these are the beneficial planets, are also going to be in your seventh house too, operating. And this may come in unexpectedly for you. Females may be of benefit for you too, especially when we talk about um, business partnerships. It could also be, for some folks, uh, some Scorpios get married at this time, right? because you're also going to have in that seventh house, Venus, which is love, females, um, money, uh, Jupiter, which expands all that and brings in good luck for you. Jupiter, traditional astrology says Jupiter in the seventh house is fabulous for a marriage. So there will be some Scorpios getting married at this time. And or maybe you have unexpectedly uh, love come into view for you um, around that new moon. Now, the full moon in Sagittarius, um, yeah, I mean, it's the second house for you. And I would say that that full moon in Sagittarius may end some form of income for you. Now, this may be something that you orchestrate, where you decide, say, it'll leave a job, and that means you lose that income. Yeah. Um, it can also be a time period where you maybe decide you want to get rid of some of the possessions that you have and you decide, you know, I've got to just get rid of this. It's just, it's, I don't use it or I don't want it. And you make that decision around that full moon to get rid of things, possessions of some sort. Um, but I'm thinking also because this is a full moon in Sagittarius and Sagittarius is all about, um, you know, foreign people, foreign lands, um, that you may get an opportunity to stop traveling internationally at this time as part of your job. And that's positive for you, that you don't want to do that anymore. And you say, oh, this is great. I can stop doing all that travel and maybe get some rest here. Let me just see what else is happening at that full moon. Yeah, I mean, you know, we also have, you know, a beautiful sextile and trine at the full moon from either the moon or the sun to Pluto. So this might be some kind of transformational thing for you. Maybe this is something you've been planning. I'm thinking now if you want to let go of a job that you're doing, especially if it relates to you having to really do a lot of long distance travel. And um, there may be some transformational thing that happens here for you with the Pluto element, right? Um, that helps you successfully transform the situation. Yeah. All right, Scorpio, take care of yourself. All right, folks, so that's it for me for this month. As I mentioned, that whole Mars in Aries will be activating all the things that happened in Aries in April in a positive way, right? Initiating them forward with, 
with action <laughs> and momentum. So I love hearing from everybody. If you've got any comments, please put them below. Um, I love doing charts. I love talking astrology. So for anybody that would like to have their chart done, all my contact info and how you do it is below. Just go to my services and pick out what you want. I'm wishing everybody a very happy May. Um, it's a time, certainly in the Northern Hemisphere, where we've got all the flowers coming up, peeking through. Um, I'm really bringing, I feel this month of May, I feel the word joy um, is a word that I think pertains to it overall. So have a joyous month. Uh, enjoy everything happening around you. Beautiful energy in the spring energy uh, for us here in the Northern Hemisphere. Take care of yourself. Sending everyone lots of love. Bye for now. Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth here from Alpus Astrology. I'd like just to give you a little more detail about um, what I do uh, with regards to the services I can offer you. Certainly I suggest that um, if you've not had your chart ever, do ever done, this would be a good time to do it. Um, contact me, all my contact de details are below and we can uh, talk to each other back and forth and arrange something for you. So I offer different services. I offer um, a full astrology report for two of my services. One is where I look at both your natal chart and your progress chart in detail. I accompany that with a physical chart as well as your charts that I'm looking at for that year. I do what's called a transit chart which really involves your progressed chart for that year in combination with your natal chart. I give you a report for that as well. Typically I'd be updating an existing report for you. I have a lot of clients that come back to me yearly. And then the other service that I offer is a combination of um, taking a quick look at the astrology. Typically it would be a year or two year, what stands out for me. Looking at that and then adding in at the end a tarot card reading to accompany it. I record that and send that to you pre-recorded. So that's not a live session. The other two that I do are live session. And then I offer obviously custom. I do a lot of um, picking marriage dates. Um, compatibility, I typically use what are called Davison charts uh, or Sinistry as well, where I can combine two charts to see how does uh, how do these two charts of these people work together. More often it's going to be sort of romantic relationships, but it can also be business relationships too. How well do we work together type thing by producing one chart. So I do all that. As I said, I would love to do your chart. Contact me below and we can work together to make that happen for you.